Hello friends, I'm Tim Wildsmith, and in this video, we're going to be taking a closer look at the Legacy Standard Bible. For the last couple of years, the LSB has been one of the most talked about Bible translations. And in this video, I want to answer one simple question. Is the LSB here to stay? Over the past couple of years, I've done a handful of videos about the Legacy Standard Bible, primarily unboxing videos and reviews like the ones stacked right here, great Bibles. But, but I want to ask the question, is the LSB here to stay? It's a new translation of the Bible, and honestly, a lot of translations come and go. Sometimes they take off and people get excited about them, but they don't actually have staying power, right? I recently did a, a video where I talked about the 10 best-selling Bible translations and kind of the top seven English Bible translations that we talk about a lot were the King James Version, the New King James Version, the English Standard Version, the New American Standard Bible, the NIV, the New International Version, the Christian Standard Bible, and the New Living Translation. That's seven translations of the Bible. You could probably throw in the New Revised Standard Version, the NRSV, but it doesn't even crack into the top 10 of sales. And out of those seven popular ones, the ESV and the CSV have both been released in the last 20 or so years. The ESV was 2001. Um, the HCSB came first in the early 2000s and then was re-released as the CSB in 2017. So in those, those top seven, top 10, there's a couple that have been released in the last 20, 25 years. Everything else is older than that. And there's an interesting thing going on there where you have to look at how does a, a new translation crack into the top 10? How does it, even not in the top 10, how does it become beloved and, and have staying power, that sort of stuff? And so I really like the LSB. I like these Bibles that have been sent to me. And I wanted to kind of take a closer look at the, the idea of, is it going to be here for a long time? And I think there's a really interesting story behind the LSB. And I think that we can answer that question by taking a closer look at who produces it, why it came to be, how it's being marketed and things like that. So that's what this video is about. It's taking a closer look at um, how the LSB came to be and what I think the future is for this Bible translation. One important thing to recognize is who is behind any translation of the Bible. And when it comes to the LSB, there's actually three different organizations that are kind of working together on the translation itself. It starts with the Lachman Foundation. You may have heard that before because they're a Bible publisher and they are the kind of overseers and caretakers of the NASB, another translation, the New American Standard Bible. The Lachman Foundation was started back in the 1940s, but they really are known for the NASB, which they first published in the 70s. They had a really big update of the NASB in the 90s. It's the it's called the 95, the NASB 95. And then a few years ago, around 20, 2018, I believe it was, they announced that they were doing a new update to their Bible. It's now become known as the NASB 2020. So you have the Lachman Foundation. They are the copyright holder, the primary publisher of the New American Standard Bible. So they're one of the players in this game. The other one is the actual publishing company that is publishing the Legacy Standard Bible. It's not Lachman. It is a company called 316 Publishing. You may have heard me in my videos talk about Steadfast Bibles. That is the one that's written here on the side of all of these Bibles. So Steadfast is an imprint of 316 Publishing. 316 started back in 2011 as a company called Green Egg Media. The first thing that they really launched into was something called the Power Bible. It's like a, I think it's based in Korea, kind of a, a Bible that's more of like a comic book style thing. I'm not super familiar with it, but that's how 316 got their start as Green Egg Media. But they got into the world of Bibles like this back in 2017 when they worked with a pastor from Southern California named John MacArthur on creating something called the Preacher's Bible. It was part, and they used the NASB 95. So the Lachman Foundation has the New American Standard Bible. John MacArthur is a pastor who really loved and used for a long time the New American Standard Bible. And he came up with the idea for like his perfect preaching Bible. And Steadfast Bibles, aka 316 Publishing, worked with John MacArthur and his team to produce this edition of the NASB 95 called the Preaching Bible. There was a really, really big one at first, and then they did the handy size. Preacher's Bible, which I actually reviewed the handy size one here on my channel in the early days 
of Bible Review Blog. So you have the Lockman Foundation with the NASB, you have 316 Publishing, aka Steadfast Bibles, doing the actual publishing of Bibles, and then you have the actual third person. It's not really John MacArthur per se, but the John MacArthur Charitable Trust. That's kind of the, the umbrella company, if you will, for John MacArthur that kind of oversees a lot of the different work that he does. So John MacArthur, like I said, he's a well-known American evangelical pastor in Southern California. He is the pastor of Grace Community Church outside of Los Los Angeles. He's probably best known around the world for Grace to You, which is his ministry primarily through television and radio, that, that sort of things. But also, um, he started and founded the Master's University and the Master's Seminary. All of that is kind of under the, the, the umbrella of the John MacArthur Charitable Trust. So they're the third player in this. And it's actually um, professors and people from the Master's Seminary and the Master's University who were the translation team for the LSB. So that's the three players behind it. Lockman, 316, and the John MacArthur folks. Those three people got together in the spring of 2020. There's a little note on 316's website about, I guess, February of 2020. They got together. They had a meeting at Grace Community Church outside of Los Angeles, and they kind of came up with this idea for the Legacy Standard Bible, and they began working on it. The first edition of the LSB was released a year later in February of 2021. They did a New Testament with Psalms and Proverbs, so it was published by uh, uh, Steadfast Bibles through 316, but the, the people who created the translation were from the Master Seminary. And then the first full edition of the Bible was they took that handy size NASB preaching Bible that they had and they made that an LSB edition. That came out in the fall of 2021. But the, the catch here is, so how does the Lockman Foundation become a part of this? Well, the LSB is an update to the 95 New American Standard Bible. So the folks on the, the John MacArthur side worked to do a new translation of the Bible, basically an updated translation of the 95. They went back to the original Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic text, and they did a full overhaul of the 95 and kind of keeping it in line with what they loved about the 95, but updating it. They did a couple of specific things, which I'll talk about. But so they had to have the permission of the folks at the Lockman Foundation to do that. So they worked with them, and then they brought in 316 as the publishing arm of the Bible. So that's how all three of those things work together. Now, what I haven't mentioned so far, and this is kind of the, the underlying subtext, is that the Lockman Foundation, well, I guess I did mention that they, they announced an update. They released the NASB 2020, as you can imagine, in the year 2020. They announced it in 2018. So this meeting happens to talk about the LSB back in early 2020. So I don't, I wouldn't say, I don't think that the folks from the Legacy Standard Bible have bashed the 2020, but it seems pretty clear that they were not thrilled with the direction that the tweaks that were made to the 2020 translation, and I can talk about that in another video, because they go back to the 95. And the timelines on their website, they show the timeline of the New American Standard Bible, and they just totally leave out the 2020 update, and they just place in its place the LSB. So the LSB is essentially an update to the 95. So Lockman said, hey, here's the new NASB, the NASB 2020. And then the Legacy Standard Bible comes out a couple of years later and says, here's an alternative to that that's kind of from the same NASB tradition, but it's more in line with the 95. Does that make sense? So that's uh, kind of the backstory behind it. I really like the LSB. I was a big fan of the NASB 95. I also like the 2020. They're, they're, they're rather similar in the broad scope of the things. They made a few different tweaks here and there, but even the LSB made a few different tweaks from the NASB 95. One of the biggest and most well-known, most talked about translations, uh, translation edits of this right here, the LSB, is that they use the word Yahweh for the divine name of God, the divine name of God in the Old Testament. So it actually says Yahweh instead of the Lord in all caps, which I really like that. I think it's a cool, uh, a cool decision to do that, and it makes it unique. So stepping back, taking a deep breath, okay? Yeah, take a deep breath, Tim. You look at all of that, and you go, here's a translation of the Bible that is based deeply on the history of the New American Standard Bible, particularly that 95 translation. It's a direct update. It kind of upholds the legacy of the 95, but it's given the legacy. It's given a new name, the Legacy Standard Bible. I actually think that's one good thing about this translation, right? Because you have the NASB now kind of moving all in on the 2020. They, they actually keep the 95 um, 
published. They're putting out new editions of the 95 even as we see, speak. But the LSB is kind of, by giving it a new name, it allows you when you're thinking about which Bible you want, you don't have to choose 2020 or 95. You can go with the LSB and you're getting something a little bit more like the 95. So I actually think that's one really good thing about the Legacy Standard Bible is that they changed the name. Because even though when I read, I've done some comparing of the LSB next to the NASB 95. And in many places, it's identical or very, very close to identical. You have to really start digging and reading side by, side by side before you find a lot of like super significant changes. And even those, I wouldn't even call them super significant other than that divine name and some other places. They've made updates, but it really feels um, like that 95 kind of legacy coming forward. The other thing that I really love about it is the Bibles, right? That's, that's probably what makes people the most excited about getting a new Bible is, is it a Bible they're going to love and enjoy reading? I say that on my channel all the time. And the folks at 316 Publishing, Steadfast Bibles, have done an incredible job of producing the Legacy Standard Bible. Right here, I have four of the editions that they've produced. This is the handy size. You have the verse by verse. You have the inside column reference and the large print wide margin. All of these Bibles, fantastic quality, fantastic type settings. They look great. They feel great. They produce them in a wide variety of options as far as bindings go, leather choices, things like that. And they're great. The paper in them is fantastic. They're easy to read. So one, I like that they changed the name. Two, I love the Bibles they're producing and they continue to produce more. You know, they're a small, a small shop really, but they are continuing to, to produce great Bibles. You think about this, right? The English Standard Version, the ESV, one of the most popular English Bible translations, started in 2001 by Crossway. And I've said this on my channel many times. One of the reasons why I think that the ESV has been so successful is because Crossway does such an excellent job of publishing Bibles. They literally make a shape and a size and anything you can imagine. Like you go to Crossway's website and click Bibles. There's just so many fantastic options out there. Now, Steadfast has a ways to go to catch up to, e to the ESV world that Crossway has created, but they're doing a really great job so far. They've made some fantastic Bibles and they haven't, they haven't had any duds so far. Let me put it that way. In the first couple of years of producing Bibles, nothing has been a, a swing and a miss, so to speak, to use a baseball analogy. They've all been really, really fantastic. Now, the question is, I think the biggest question about the LSB and whether or not it has staying power, that would be a negative, is... When you look, go back to that top 10 list that I just told you about, the NASB comes in at number nine or number 10 every year. So the LSB is, is kind of doing battle for ninth or 10th place. Like if it were to become so popular that it could break into the top 10, it would probably only get to number 10. I don't think that it's on track. The NASB was not popular enough that by replacing it with the LSB, it's going to all of a sudden vault into the top five or the top three, that sort of thing. I just think the NASB is a translation that doesn't have as much as much heat behind it as the ESV, the NIV, the NLT, which were the top three, or even the venerable King James Version, which was number four on the most recent list. So that's the, that's the, that's the only strike against it. And then I do think that I, I have no problems with John MacArthur. Like I was somebody who, before I started reviewing Bibles, I was not super familiar with Dr. MacArthur's work. I definitely knew his name and had heard of it. I might have read like one or two of his books um, at different phases in my life, but he's not somebody that I was like um, watching his sermons all the time or listening to his radio show all the time. So I honestly thought when it was first pitched to me, like John MacArthur has a new translation of the Bible, I thought, oh, well, I don't know that that's actually going to have staying power. But as I learned more about it, it's not just John MacArthur did it. He had a team of translators from a well-known seminary working with a really great publisher connected to the Lachman Foundation in the 95. I think you put all of that together, and I don't think that the translation relies simply on John MacArthur. I, I think that the translation has legs beyond just being attached to one person's name and one person's reputation. So I think that that's a good thing for it too. So again, the only real downside that I see about the LSB is that it's kind of fighting for 10th place, but I don't think that that means that it doesn't have staying power. In fact, my answer to the question, the question of the video is, does the LSB have staying power? And I would say the answer is a resounding yes. I really do think it does. When you, when you put in the legacy of the 95 and the tradition that it comes from, which I think is a great Bible translation, even though 
it might be fighting for 10th place. I still think it's a great option. There's features about uh, the NASB 95 that the LSB keeps, like the, the small caps in the New Testament when they're quoting things from the Old Testament, the capitalizing the pronouns for God, that sort of thing. I think those are things that a lot of people really love about that type of translation, and this is a place where you can still find that. So I, I, I love that about it. I think the Bibles, like I said, are fantastic Bibles. So as long as you can get a really awesome, high-quality Bible from 316, I think that that's going to be a good option for them. And then again, I just, I think it reads well. I think it's fun to study with. I, 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 there's a lot that I like about the translation itself and for that reason alone. So I think you put all that together. You've got to be able to market this, which 316 does a great job. You've got to be able to have a solid translation base, which they do by coming from the 95, something that has stood the test of time for the past, uh, I guess it came out in the 70s. So it's been uh, 50 plus years that this Bible translation has been out there. So I think that it has the roots. It has the forward momentum and it has the team behind it to really be a great Bible translation moving forward. Do I think that it's going to vault into the top five in the best-selling Bible translations in 2023, 24, 25, or beyond? No, I do not. But I do think that it has staying power, and I do think that it can be a, a good translation moving forward for a lot of people, particularly because of these great Bibles that are being produced. So that's my thoughts on the LSB. It's got an interesting backstory. It's got an interesting team of people behind it, and I do think that the LSB is here to stay. Again, there's a lot of other Bible translations that come and go, um, and some of them you know, get really hot at the beginning, but then you don't hear about them very much. Um, but as long as I think you have a great publisher behind you, and you have a really solid translation as your starting point, I do think you have staying power and the LSB. And as far as I'm concerned, I think it really does have that. So I would love to hear from you. Let me know what your thoughts are on the LSB or anything that I've said in this video. Leave me a comment. I will get back to you with a response. I love doing videos like this. This is kind of a different thing for my channel, but it's something I've been thinking about, so I wanted to sit down and have this conversation with you. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button for me. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and definitely surf around here on my channel and find some other Bible-related videos. I've got a lot of great content that I would love for you to check out. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. I'll see you next time.